Hi YouTube, this is Joe Kelton with Kelton Cutlery. You can find us on the web, keltoncutlery.com. Uh, this is the second video for casting tonight. Um, I have to do them in individual videos because uh, I haven't figured out how to stop and start the camera and still have it on the same video or how to do any editing or anything like that. Um, we ended off the last time uh, trying to cast these aluminum snowmen and what we found was Seasoning might be really good for cast iron if you're going to cook with it. Apparently the seasoning, uh, the aluminum doesn't like that seasoning. We smoked ourselves out of the shop here. So, and it also looked, we were having a problem getting the mold to fill out with the aluminum. So, we're preheating at this time. We had a couple of snowmen that were stuck in there. Um, the aluminum went, it overflowed the snowman mold and then got caught in between the, the parts of the mold there. So uh, what I did was I left two of them in there, mostly because I couldn't get them out while it was hot. And then also I kind of figured it would help preheat it. So we're gonna preheat this one. And it should be pretty hot already. So now we're gonna preheat this, uh, uh, this corn cast iron mold. We'll preheat it for just a minute or two, and then we'll go ahead and um, uh, we've got a, a stainless steel crucible that I welded up the other day inside the foundry right now filled with uh, copper pipe. So, uh, and it's all molten, so we're gonna go ahead and preheat this, then we'll skim off that pot, and then we'll go ahead and pour it and see how well it fills the mold. With a little bit of luck, we'll have copper corn and copper snowman. And then we'll use those for ingots for the for the next time. Or if they come out really nice, maybe I'll polish them up and keep them. All right, so here we go. And this is only the second time that I've poured copper. tell you the truth it's kind of looking like like I might have to get an actual honest to goodness crucible a ceramic one better. They're not filling out perfect, but but then again, I didn't use any flux or I didn't use any flux or anything with this copper. The reason I say that I might need to get an actual ceramic crucible is see all this stuff that's the stainless steel scaling up it takes a pretty high temperature to make stainless steel uh, scale up if in fact this was just uh, was stainless steel or not it didn't have any rust on it and um, so I figured it was stainless it might uh, it might be mild and just hadn't rusted yet so let me go put this away and then we'll show you the the wheel that we cast out of uh, aluminum Stick that in there. Let me put some brass in there first. That's our next next goal for tonight: is to uh, melt down some brass and see how it casts. So we've just got uh, some plumbing parts.
I have no idea what grade of, of brass this is, but when you hit it with a file, it is yellow, so that's about as close as I can get you. By the way, thanks for watching me fumble around. Uh, I'm still really new to this whole metal casting stuff. I've cast my own lead bullets for years, uh, but this is, I think this is like the sixth or the seventh time that I've casted aluminum. I think the, the second time for copper, and if it works, it'll be the first time for brass. This here is the aluminum wheel. Uh, we stuck it out in the snow just to kind of cool it off faster so that we can take a look at it. And this is by far the best sand casting job that I've ever done. All six times. Um, this is going to end up, I'll cut this part right here, this flat, uh, the top of the sprue. I'll cut it off with a saw and then clamp that up in the chuck on my lathe. And then we'll turn the whole thing down and make it look like this six inch wheel. And then bore a hole through the center for the shaft, uh, cut in pockets for the bearings. And then I just found this, uh, this place, they sell castable rubber. So I ordered uh, some 70 durometer castable rubber. Apparently you cast it just like you cast aluminum or anything else, only without the heat. It's like a two part epoxy. Um, so I'm pretty excited to see what that's going to turn out, but I'm going to attempt to uh, cast that rubber on the face of this so it'll cushion, uh, um, cushion the wheel against the knife that I'm working on. But anyways, uh, hey, let's go see if, the, uh, see if we've got copper snowmen. Now look at that. Those zoom in a little bit or is it close enough mm -hmm. they shrink quite a bit because when I finished pouring the level of the copper was up to the top of the the mold and now there's uh, quite a bit farther down so let's see if we have copper snowman Look at that, copper snowman. The reason I was hunting for uh, cast iron um, pans to use as ingot molds is you'll notice that the one of those is missing. That's because I poured some copper into there and it instantly brazed itself to the bottom of that pan. And the only way to get it out was to cut it out. And then the other pan, part of the smoke in our last video, was uh, was this was this muffin tin. Okay, back up, son. This muffin tin here, it's actually aluminum. It kind of looked to me like it was uh, uh, tin, or it might be aluminum with uh, tin plating on it. But the, uh, when we poured the aluminum into it. It just heated it up and melted it and ran right through it, made a big old mess. But since it's aluminum and I can't seem to get the, uh, the pieces of regular aluminum out, we'll just melt the whole thing down and uh, see what happens. But there you go, copper snowmen and copper corn. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.